Mr. Beryl Solomon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! to go today it was a freezing cold evening bitter and I drove home from work and the past few months had been really 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 tough but that day was the worst day of my entire life And I walked up the steps to my house carrying myself. Icy steps. And the door to my house opened slowly. And my wife sees her husband standing in the door, sobbing like a little baby. And she says, sweetheart, come in. What's wrong? I was embarrassed to walk in the door. She says, come in, what's wrong, what happened? I said, it's time that we start, that I start my own business. It's time. And she said to me, not only are you gonna start your own business, but you're gonna be great, and you're going to inspire millions of people along the way. And here we are tonight, ladies and gentlemen, at the world's largest LinkedIn meetup ever in history. Big round of applause to Montreal! Yes, yes! So I started to prepare, and I got all of my things in order, and I went, with my resignation letter, and I stepped down as president of a company. I had a beautiful six-figure salary, and I went from zero to he from hero, zero to hero, <laughs> overnight. And I remember as I drove home on my last day of work on the Mercier Bridge. This is this isn't going where you think it's going to go. And I was on the Mercier Bridge and my wife was on the phone and she was nervous, naturally. We have kids at home, babies. We have a mortgage, we have tuition, cars, you name it, just like all of us here. And she said to me, how are we gonna do it? What's gonna be? And I said to her, I don't know how, I don't know where, I don't know when, but I know that the one above is gonna take care of us. And a ball came into my throat, I said, it's going to be okay. I got together all of my marketing material, I put together a website. I actually sat down before the website, I sat down in the kitchen with a pen and a piece of paper, and I wrote down all the ideas that I thought could be a potential good business to be in. Everything from selling meat, to selling life insurance, to doing trucking, to, to, to selling airplanes. I really want, I still want to sell airplanes. <laughs> Next year. 
wealthy jets. <laughs> and I, video production was on the menu, and I had some experience with it because I had produced some videos from my father's company, and although we weren't the biggest in the market, it allowed us to get into gigantic companies because it positioned ourselves as a bigger company, and I saw the magic of it. And I said, I could do this. I have a good eye for it. And I told my wife, we are opening up a video production company, and she looked at me and she said, you're crazy. <laughs> but she supported me every step of the way. I took together my marketing materials, I put together a website, I put together a video to launch. My big day had arrived, I put it on Facebook, I put it on Instagram, and I got two things. Rumors and jealousy. And that's all I got from Facebook and Instagram. And then I said, where else could I get my message out? I gotta get it out there, I gotta get it out into the world. Where do I get my message? Remember I had this thing called LinkedIn that some people who don't speak English call it Linky Dink. <laughs> What's with that? <laughs> so I took out my LinkedIn and I forgot the password. This is like 11 and a half months ago. I forgot the password. I figured out how to get it. I put in the secret question and it turns out that I, went, I, I got in and I remember I put the exact same post that I put on Facebook and Instagram, I put onto LinkedIn. And I clicked post and I forgot about it. I woke up the next morning, I had over 100 people. I had, four, I had like 450 people on my, on my LinkedIn, it wasn't anything crazy at the time. I had, four, I had 100 people who reached out to me saying, congratulations, I wish you all the best, congrats on your journey, we're with you, we're following, we're, going to, we're rooting for you. I said, wow, I put on Facebook and Instagram and all I get is hate. Facebook, don't worry, I love you guys, okay? Don't worry about it. Facebook Live. <sighs> don't shut it off. And I put it out and I just got nothing. Rumors, nothing, gossip. LinkedIn, the people were willing to help. They wanted to be involved. They wanted to be engaged. You know, it's the same guy that, w that signs on to LinkedIn in the morning that signs on to Facebook. It's the same guy. But on, when, he has, when he's wearing his Facebook hat, he wants to see cat videos and he wants to see pictures of his niece. <laughs> and he wants to see who knows what. He's posting pictures of his, of his, he's renewing his vows. And then on LinkedIn, it's the same guy, but he's wearing a different hat. And the hat that he's wearing is personal growth, self-development, career, business, everything that I like. I, Christian, I really, I really agree with you. I, I, I suck at sports. I, you know, whenever I try to slam the puck into the end zone, it's, it's not good. I just like business. It's where, it's where I connect. It's what I, it's, it's what I breathe, I eat, I sleep, I love it. I love it, I love business. And these people felt the same way that I felt. And I connected with them instantly. So I wanted more. You know, it says if you have two, you want four. If you want four, you want eight. If you want eight, you want 16, and so forth. I wanted more. So there's this little button that some of you might know about. It's called Add. You can add as many people as you want to your LinkedIn. You have up to 30,000 people that you could add on LinkedIn. So I took my, my right finger and I put it on the mouse and I clicked for days. <laughs> <laughs> and I added thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And before I know it, I turned around and I had 7,000 people on my LinkedIn. And here's the funny part, a lot of people think that you shouldn't add people because it's random and who wants this weird, you know, guy with a beard adding them and like, you might, th and, and it, you might think that it's weird, but LinkedIn actually is very intelligent. They only populate people that are associated with you. So you could, whoever they're suggesting you to add when you're clicking add and you're just, you know, hitting that add button, it's people that are either connected to a friend that you're connected to in a similar industry, in a similar demographic. So it's already sort of generating warm people for you. So I started to add, and 
within a, within a couple months at 7,000 people. So now that we understand the importance of LinkedIn in terms of business, why I like it a billion times better over Facebook or Instagram, which by the way, you still have to use <laughs> because gossip and rumors are also good in a certain sense and don't stop posting there, you have to use LinkedIn. So now that we all understand, we're all on the same page. LinkedIn is powerful, LinkedIn is where it's at, you're in business, you gotta use LinkedIn. I don't care if you're in the trucking industry, I don't care if you're a hairdresser, I don't care if you are a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, an architect, a businessman, a shipper, a, it doesn't matter. Everybody has to be on LinkedIn, that's where the magic happens. Oh, you're not just limited to your immediate demographic, we're doing business all over the world. We're flying to China to do a job for a company because they found out about us and they want to Americanize their marketing. I mean, how incredible is that? International reach, we could take international dollars and bring it all the way into Montreal and finally kind of make Montreal great again. <laughs> So now that I've convinced you to use LinkedIn and I don't work for them and I get nothing out of it, I just genuinely, genuinely care, believe it or not, I genuinely care about the success of every person in this room. It actually really matters to me for some reason or other. And I think that each other's success means something to each other. When I see somebody win on LinkedIn, I'm so happy. When I, I don't even know the guy, I'm happy. So here's a few practical, real steps that all of you guys could use, and each one of you has my 10 on your, on your, on your seats, where those 10 lists, if you follow those 10 things, I guarantee you, you will make so much more money this year. Yeah. 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 And give with that money so much more charity. Because that is the intention of making money at the end of the day, of course, we all know. Creating goes like this. Batman is an example of creating. It takes $200 million to produce a Batman film. It takes three years, the most expertise on planet Earth, and they release it once. And that is creating. And every company needs a certain amount of extremely professional marketing. Plug. Every company needs an extremely, needs 10% marketing that looks amazing. You could go to the big guys, you could go to the big banks, you could go to the, whoever it is, your big clients, and impress the big people that this is who we are and this is our marketing and it's official. Every company needs that. But each individual, here's another example of um, creating that makes me a little nauseous, I'm gonna share it. It's the 19 year old kid who graduates that day from university and he sees he has this new interesting video option on his phone and he takes, first of all, who's from Concordia here? I know there's some Concordia boys. Yes, yes. There's some Concordia people, I saw you guys on the register. Yes, welcome. But when you graduate, okay, guys from Concordia, on the day that you graduate, please do not start giving us all business advice about telling us all of the business advice that you're gonna to give to the world. Here's what I suggest you do, that's creative. Document your journey. Hi, my name is, what's your name? Alexander. Hi, what's your name? The, the gentleman, the gentleman. Hi, my name is Wallace. <laughs> and Alexander. My name is Wallace. Today I graduated from LinkedIn, uh, from LinkedIn. Today I graduated from Concordia. And boy, oh boy, am I happy. I'm so excited to use my skills and my talents. I don't know exactly what the job market is gonna bring me, but I just wanted to announce to you, the world, that I'm ready to work, and if you have opportunities, I'm young and handsome and ready to roll. How much better is that? You wanna reach out to that kid and hug him and say, hey, I was there too. I was 19 or 20 and I graduated too and I felt lost. Why don't you come meet me, we could have a coffee. Versus the 19 year old, 20 year old kid that's standing, well, you know, the markets today are really excellent. And Bitcoin, you gotta invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> See, cr trying to create, create content is very difficult. Documenting the journey is what people want to see today. So let's talk about documenting. I'm going to just start from the, one of the very first posts that I posted. I remember 
I posted the, this entire journey of starting this business from scratch. I posted every single step of the way. I post when we lose contracts. I post when we win contracts. I post when we hire people. I post when we fire people. I know I should have told Romeo to put down the box. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Thank you to the 700 people that messaged me. We post the highs, we post the lows. Nobody wants to hear a story that is boring. You never heard a story once in your life. In a place far, far away, the weather was great, everyone was nice, and everyone lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Usually the story looks like this. There was a man, and he had a struggle. And he didn't know how to endure, and his back was against the wall. And he fought day after day after day after day. And he won some and he lost some. And then at the end, you see him knocking out the guy in slow motion to slow music. And you cry because you joined him in his journey. And I think that's why people relate to what I'm doing so well is because we're, I'm documenting the journey. I'm documenting what's going on. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, but how can I document? My boss is gonna see, my colleagues are gonna see, my clients are gonna see, they're gonna see my vulnerability. They're gonna see who I really am, they're not gonna to wanna to do business with me. I live my life by a principle. The people who like me will like me no matter what, and the people who do not like me will not like me no matter what. I remember, I remember, I was in a sales center a few, in a previous, in a previous role, and um, I remember there was one guy there, and he loved sports. And all of his customers, when he got on the phone with them for the first 20 minutes of every single phone call, they seemed to talk about sports. And I said, wow, what a great method. And then I tried to talk about sports for the first 20 minutes, and it completely turned them off. <laughs> Actually, he's in this room. Where's Josh? Where are you? What's up, Josh? Round of applause for Josh. <laughs> Woo! Every time we got on a phone call, it was sports, 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 sports. When I finally stopped trying to be Josh, and it became Beryl, not Burrell, I get all the time, yo, Burrell, we're coming. <laughs> Jessica, you're like, Burrell. You're the best. And when I finally stopped trying to be Josh, and I was just Beryl, and yes, you guys might find this shocking. I'm Jewish. <laughs> the secret's out. And I talk about God once in a while. And I thought, oh my gosh, my life is over and no one's gonna to wanna to talk to me. But you know what? I found my own core of people and who appreciate in the first five, 10 minutes of my conversation, we talk about things and how's your family, thank God, and what's going on, thank God. And, and, and those became my customers. And because I was who I was, I was able to develop my tribe, my people, the people who like you for who you are. You could spend your life trying to be everything to everybody, which you'll never be, and you'll end up being nothing to nobody. Or you could spend your life being yourself online and people will gravitate you to you in the thousands, tens of thousands. I stopped adding at 17,000. I now have 20,000 people on my, on my LinkedIn and all the time. And trust me, you guys know, my posts are anything from, con from, from, from PC. Like, I thought when I put my last Trump post up, that was over. I thought they were gonna shut off my LinkedIn post. But like, I got 170 people that reached out to me saying, you know what, I really appreciate that you're open about that because I can't be and I really like you. And in my mind, I'm like, let's do some business, you know? Business is not done between X company and Y company. It's done between Beryl and Steven, Muhammad and Joseph, Stephanie and Ellie. That's who it's done between. And people online want to see that you're real. 
So now that we understand how to get likes, so practically speaking, you get the engagement, how do you do it? By being yourself, number one. Second is, document your journey. You wanna see a perfect example of documenting? I don't have my phone. But can everybody, does anybody have a phone in this room? Does everybody have a phone here? Who has a phone right now? Take out your phone, okay? I want you to take the person next to you, even if you never met them before and they smell like <laughs> B.O. I want you to take a picture with them right now, yes, and then I'm gonna tell you what to do with it. One, three, two and a half, and one. When you guys go home tonight, I want you to post that picture on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook! Boom! <laughs> Two more minutes and we're doing Q&A. I want you to take that picture and I want you to go home and I want you to write, I'm just gonna give you the first sentence and you fill in the blank. I had the best night ever at the Montreal LinkedIn event. <laughs> Barrel's tuxedo was spectacular. And what I took away was X. Whatever it is you took away. And what did you just do? You simply documented your journey. You didn't create, you didn't give advice to anybody, you didn't hire, you didn't hire a, you know, a $50 million marketing campaign, you got your name out there, you're showing that you're engaged, you're showing that you're at the coolest LinkedIn event possibly ever in history, and you're posting, your name is out there, you're getting out there, great. So you have to use all mediums, all mediums, photo, video, maybe one day Mr. Wiener will give me my video, it's a, it's a, it's a conspiracy. London, where are you? I want video. I'm the only, am I the only guy in this room without video? It's ridiculous. It's a conspiracy. Oh, it stresses me out thinking about it. You have to use all three mediums to post. Now, great, I have likes, comments, and posts, and shares. What do I do with them? A lot of people message me, how do I get more likes? That's the wrong question. The question is, how do I turn those likes into dollars? We generated on LinkedIn, with God's help, $500,000 in sales in our first year on LinkedIn alone. Is there an applause sign? That was great. I need a, I need a shirt that says I'm much cooler on LinkedIn. <laughs> so great, we have the likes, we have the comments, we have the shares I posted when I'm with my daughter eating a caramel apple on Sunday. I post it when I go to my friend's office and we talk about business and we talk about maybe a contract. I post a picture with him in front of his logo on the door. I posted it. I now post when I hired someone, I post when I fired someone. I'm getting the post out there. I mean, us, we, we're now, I, we posted when we are at the MTL LinkedIn event and it was great and now I have 16 likes. What do I do with them? How do I turn that into business? You ready for it? You go through the likes, comments and shares and you see if those people are potential clients for your product or service. And if you see that it's a big company, and I suggest you do business with big companies, because big companies have big money, and if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it big. Yes, we only deal with very wealthy companies. Because wealthy companies have wealth. You want to catch big fish, you gotta go to the deepest, darkest part of the ocean. If you go in the pond, you're gonna catch minnows. If you're going to the deep, dark ocean, you're gonna catch whales. And that's what we want. So you go through, you qualify it. Out of those 16 people, 72 people, 96 people, you had a blockbuster post, you had 180 likes. Who liked it? You'd be shocked. You'd be shocked at who liked it. I just wanna make a mention who's in this room right now. Bombardier, SLL Canada, 
Dr. Pocket, TD Bank, RSBC Bank, National Bank. You guys know who you are. Thank you for coming. I love you guys. <laughs> There's a lot more on here. These people are people that work at really big companies that you could do business with, you could interact with, that you could win with. So you message them and say, hi. By the way, I also I like to talk to either the president, the CEO, the marketing manager, but if it's not, by the way, if it's the lowest person on the totem pole in that business, the lowest person on the totem pole in the sales department of Bombardier, Bombardier, wherever you are, come talk to me after, <laughs> has a better chance of getting the ear of the CEO than a random weirdo on LinkedIn. He just does, or she just does. She's connected, she's in the business. You reach out, you say, hi, thank you so much for liking or commenting on my post, so sweet of you. You look up who they are and what they do. I noticed you're doing a really good job answering the phones at Bombardier. <laughs> Keep up the great work. And that's it. And then you follow that person and you like and comment on whatever they're, whatever they're doing. And then at some point in the future, after two, three, four touches, you message them, hey, I think it's about time we hopped on a quick call. Let me know when you have three minutes this week. Why do I say three minutes? I always do, because people don't want to hop on the phone with some weirdo from LinkedIn and be stuck for an hour because they're too polite to hang up the phone. So you qualify it, you say, I need three minutes or less of your time, and you make the phone call. And then from that phone call, you make a meeting in person. And from that meeting in person, you bring a contract and you sign a damn contract with them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you don't let them leave until you get their signature on that piece of paper. But you see, but, and that's really how I built my business, literally out of thin air. But what happens after a while, ladies and gentlemen, is really cool is people start to reach out to you. That's the really cool part. People start to message you and say, hey, I love what you're doing, you're doing great, and you look up his name and you see that he's like the president of the biggest construction company in the city of Montreal, which is really cool. Or you have these gigantic companies that people are taking interest in what you're doing and you're building a network of almost a thousand people in a room that come to hang out with you for a night. It's so powerful, but you have to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable. You have to show weakness, you have to show real, you have to, show, you have to be real. People don't want to be friends with robots. Last thing before we get to Q&A. I like to tell, tell a story, of a, it's a parable. It's not actually a story that happened, it's a parable. There was once a man, and this man had everything. He had a beautiful family, he had a beautiful job, he had a beautiful wife, a beautiful house, everything that you could ask for, this man had. And at 40 years old, his entire life began to fall apart right in front of his eyes. He lost his job, he became terminally ill, his house burned down with all of his children inside of it, we should never know of such a thing. And he lost everything. One step by one step, he got his health back. He remarried. He found the love of his life and had children with her and built another beautiful home and found another beautiful career. And he put his whole life back together and he passed away at the ripe old age of 90 years old. At the end of his life, he goes up to heaven and he's sitting with the big men and he's reviewing his life one step at a time hour by hour, minute by minute. And he sees up until 40 years old, there's two sets of footsteps in the sand. His and God's. But at 40 years old, when everything began to fall apart, he sees that there's only one set of footsteps in the sand. God's disappeared. And he looked up and he said, how could you do this to me? My whole life you were with me, side by side. And in the hardest time of my life, this is when you leave me? How could you do this to me? 
And God said back to him, You're right. You only see one set of footsteps in the sand. But the set of footsteps that you see are mine. And you don't see yours because I was carrying you the entire time. Whatever we go through in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, you should know that you are not alone. I lost everything and rebuilt everything from scratch with his help. And there's always hope. Always.